Hi folks, my name is Mickey Raoul and I'll be your presenter for this video tutorial on PrintServe roughness. Thanks for watching. Today I'm going to cover, or in this series anyways, I'm going to cover uh, what we all recognize in, uh, as the fifth of our more commonly used uh, test methods, the PrintServe method. So we've gone through already kind of a little bit of a history, a little bit of a timeline. Already we've covered basically 30 years, maybe 30 plus years of experience, of development, and now we're looking at developing the printer tester. A gentleman named John Russell Parker, who was a scientist, an engineer working for a manufacturer in Europe, came up with this idea that he would incorporate a lot of the, uh, let's say, a lot of the systems that had been developed prior to that. Again, utilizing air leak measurement in his system, in his t uh, instrument. But he came up with some very unique, let's say, unique does designs, especially unique design in the measurement head. Prior to his development work in the late 50s, early 60s, most everything was tested the, as we talked about these annular rings that we put in, on top of the surface of the sample that we want to be measuring, most of that was fairly wide by comparison to what John was looking at. <clears throat> this is an incomplete measurement head. But to give you an idea of the size of this measurement head and the gap in this measurement head, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a wide flatten that's semi-polished in between, within that platen, there's a groove that's cut out, and within that groove, there is the metering land that's placed in the center. So if you can get an idea, this is a cutaway view. This is the outer ring, which I kind of describe here. This is the inner ring, which I describe right in the center. This metering land here is only 51 microns wide two thousandths of an inch. He was looking at measuring at an even higher resolution than anyone prior to his development. In order to do that, however, there's no way that we could manufacture a measurement head, whether it was a, in the form of the Benston head or in the form of the uh, Sheffield head, that would actually be robust enough to <laughs> successfully repeat tests on a particular product day in and day out. So what he decided to do was actually support it with two guard lands. This land and this land here are helping to support the gap, sorry, helping to support the, the annular land that runs around the perimeter of this measurement head. In a, this measurement head, like I said, was 51 microns. This gap that you see here is only 150 microns wide. So what he tried to do was center that annular ring within that gap. So when you place this measurement head on top of a measurement surface, now we have all the support we need and we can come in contact with the paper surface, but only have a contact space of two thousandths of an inch wide. He also, in his design, incorporated a resilient backing. That backing happened to be made up of the same material that is carrying the letterpress or the gravure press, the blanket, if you will, that's used in those press operations. <clears throat> he there need, again, we talk a lot about uh, creating some type of a pressure differential. So his uh, method have to, had to incorporate some type of pressure differential in order to get airflow across his metering lands and across the topography of the surface that he's measuring. He had one inlet that was coming to the one side of his metering land and another inlet, in this particular case, actually it's an outlet, but in this case, another pathway to the opposite side of the metering land. 
So he had a pathway that that air could flow over. Give me just a second here. I'll take this down. Now I have a bit of a higher resolution picture. If you can imagine this area here, this area here are the two clamping lands. Sorry, the two support lands also to help clamp the sample. This is my 2000s annular ring that goes around the perimeter. This is my resilient backing, and of course, now I have my paper sample. And again, he had to come up with some way of being able to produce some type of a pressure differential from one side of this annular ring to the other in order to get some type of flow going through there. What he devised was a pathway, as we saw in the other picture, to uh, enter and uh, so Essentially, now we have this area here, which we could consider our cylinder that we can charge with pressure. Um, if we have a high pressure in this area, we have a low pressure in this area, comparatively speaking. Now the only path for that air to uh, go and to equilibrate is underneath this metering land and across the topography of the sample and escape to atmosphere. Okay. so. We've got a sandwich that's um, very similar to all of our other methods. We've got a pressure differential, and now we need a means to actually measure that airflow. So when we look at measuring airflow previous to this, again, we describe some, let's say, some uh, volume that you measure, uh, so you have a rate uh, based on a volume. We had rotometer tubes that actually measured the flow through the system. And in this particular case, what he decided to do was to take another, another approach and actually use differential pressure to measure the airflow uh, through a particular system. And there's a very good relationship between change in differential airflow, sorry, differential pressure and the rate of flow that's moving through your system. Upstream, of this particular measurement head, we have another fluidic restrictor, okay? That's finely tuned. We have a length of tube that's long enough so that we have a good laminar airflow through that tube. And we have a differential pressure sensor so that we can measure upstream and downstream of that, of that float fluidic restrictor. We have a second pre differential pressure gauge that can measure now the exit of that pressure that's at the exit of that fluidic restrictor and measure to atmosphere. So we can measure the pressure drop that goes across the system and out to atmosphere. We use some sophisticated mathematics and we can calculate what the airflow is. Now, Dr. Parker uh, himself decided that he would try to come up with a, rather than a relative number, similar to our discussions with the Sheffield test, uh, a basic uh, milliliter per minute flow value. What he thought he would try to do is to come up with a calculation that, w that he called the cube root mean cubed gap. And by measuring this flow across this gap here, this differential pressure, knowing the viscosity of the ambient air, width of the measurement head, of course that's documented, the volume of air flow that we can calculate again with our differential pressure sensors, the median length, okay, that's the perimeter of the, the length of this metering land, and the differential pressure across here. And of course, we have an easy way to measure that. Using all those values, he was able to calculate the micron roughness, which related to the mean gap between the metering land that we have in contact with the sample and the valleys within that sample. All right, so coming up with a, let's say a, a relative, <laughs> if there is such a thing, a relative absolute number, it was able, he was able to go back and the size of this metering land certainly wasn't something that he arbitrarily selected. Two thousandths of an inch was very close to the same size as a half dot in a lot of the printing operations. So it was somewhat meaningful to measure the roughness at the resolution that we'd actually be printing on. And that was very helpful in making different gains in the printing industry and resolving some issues 
as far as the improving the topography, maybe it's adding coding, maybe it's uh, more calendaring, what have you, but improving the tech, the improvement on the measurement system helped us improve and develop new products to produce better images uh, and higher resolution images and the like. That's it for today. I appreciate you watching. After watching this video, you should have a good foundation of moving forward in the series. Like always, we enjoy helping our customers. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us because our goal is to help you make better paper.